did sea levels rise around 400 BC, it is an accepted scientific fact that there was a dramatic and sudden rise of sea levels at the end of the Ice Age. Most date this global catastrophic event to around 10 to 15,000 years ago, but could it have happened much more recently than that? Oral traditions, world myth, and histories tell the story of an ancient sea level rising event. Samoans speak of a time when everything was overwhelmed by a boundless sea. Ifugao from the Philippines say the waters which covered the earth formed mountains and valleys as they rushed out. The North American Hopi recall watching their islands sink into the ocean as they escaped to a new land. Australia has preserved numerous stories. Tribes can still point out areas in Port Phillip Bay where kangaroos had grazed. How the sea had flooded the lands around Bathurst and Melville, making mountain peaks into islands off Australia's northern coast. Likewise, Rottnest, Karnak, and Garden Islands were said to have been high grounds of a forested mainland before the sea swept in. The sea rise event remains so fresh in world memory that most people groups can still name the mountain on which they were saved. Toraja of Celebes point to Mount Wawom Pebato. The Alfour were saved on Mount Noesake. Roti from Timor had run to Mount Lakimola. Hawaiians found refuge on Mauna Kea. New Zealand Maori had Mount Hikurangi. Beside the freshness of memories, we also have the freshness of the geological evidence for the end of the Ice Age. Many of the glacial features are still sharp and only slightly eroded, indicating that the Ice Age was fairly recent. A good example of this is the horseshoe-shaped moraines that extend out from the Waloa Mountains on Portland Promontory, on the east coast of Hudson Bay, in latitude 58 degrees and southward, the high rocky hills are completely glaciated and bare. The strayi are as fresh-looking as if the ice had left them only yesterday. The Greeks record how Dardanus, first king of Arcadia, was driven from his land by a great flood, which submerged the lowlands, rendering them unfit for cultivation. The people retreated to the mountains, but they soon decided that the land left was not enough to support them all. Some stayed with Dimas, son of Dardanus, as their king. Dardanus led the rest to the island of Samothrace. However, Samothrace had not always been an island, but the highlands of a productive mainland. Greek myth holds that the sea rose when the barriers dividing the Black Sea from the Mediterranean burst, releasing waters from the Black Sea in a great torrent that washed over part of the coast of Asia and the lowlands of Samothrace. Fishermen still occasionally draw up parts of stone columns in their nets, signs of cities drowned in the sea. Underwater archaeologist Bob Ballard and his team have uncovered an ancient shoreline 400 feet below the surface of the Black Sea. Underwater robot scouts have been mapping this landscape and have discovered remnants of houses made of mud and wood. According to Ballard, this was not just a slow-moving, advancing rise of sea level, but a really big flood that then stayed. The land that went under stayed under. Turkish myth tells of when the Black Sea broke out. They say Queen Katife of Smyrna had threatened to drown Alexander the Great when he asked for tribute. The conqueror decided to drown her instead, hiring laborers to make a strait of the Bosphorus. But in the middle of a labor dispute, the Black Sea swept away the last dike and drowned the workmen. The flood spread over Queen Katife's country, drowning her and several cities in Africa. The whole world would have been engulfed, but Alexander the Great was prevailed upon to open the Strait of Gibraltar, letting the Mediterranean escape into the ocean. Evidence of the flood can still be seen in the form of drowned cities on the coast of Africa. This myth tells us that the rising of the sea levels not only affected the continents of Europe and Asia, but Africa as well. And although the role of Alexander the Great in the catastrophic rise of sea levels is dubious, 
mention of the conqueror in connection with the Black Sea event implies that it may have happened sometime in the 4th century BC. Egypt suffered severe losses as their Mediterranean port cities of Thonis, known to the Greeks as Heracleion, Canopus, and other cities along the ancient Nile Delta, were submerged 6.5 kilometers away from the current shoreline. These underwater cities were rediscovered in 2000 by the European Institute for Underwater Archaeology, led by Frank Gaudio. Herodotus wrote of Thonis as the official port of entry to the Nile in 425 BC. Thonis was gone when Alexandria was founded in 331 BC to replace it on the new Mediterranean coast of northern Egypt, thus narrowing our timeline from 425 BC when Taunus was still on dry ground and 332 BC when Alexandria was built on the modern-day coastline. On the other side of the planet, a people group scholars call the Lapitan settled in Micronesia and Polynesia with distinctive pottery dated to around 800 BC to around 500 BC, pottery that was found by ferry line workers on the seafloor off the coast of Upolo Island in Mulifanua Bay. Abundant Lapitan pottery shards indicate that a large ancient village is now located under the Pacific Ocean. More than 200 Lapita sites have since been uncovered, ranging from 4,000 kilometers from coastal island Melanesia to Fiji and Tonga, with its most eastern limits so far in Samoa. The islanders may not have been too surprised by the discovery since legends of a great flood in which a multitude of people perished are told by the natives of those group of islands which under the general names of Polynesia and Micronesia are scattered widely over the Pacific. In ancient times, Ta'aroa, the principal god, being angry with men on account of their disobedience to his will, overturned the world into the sea when the earth sank into the waters, excepting a few oros or projecting points which remaining above its surface constituted the principal cluster of islands. Catastrophic sea level rise may also explain the sudden disappearance of the Jomon culture from Japan around 400 BC after enjoying thousands of years of civilization. Around the same time in Mesoamerica, something happened to the sophisticated Olmec culture that began around 1200 BC and abruptly ended around 400 BC when their riverside city of La Venta was abandoned and reclaimed by the jungle. Around 400 BC, the Chavin of central Peru mysteriously disappeared. When it was at the apogee of its power, the Chavin world began to dissolve. No clues were left to tell future generations why this first American civilization ended or what happened to the Chavin themselves. To understand the mystery, perhaps they just needed to ask the surviving descendants whose oral traditions had preserved this story. Long ago, before there were any Incas, the country was populous, but the ocean broke out of its bounds. The land was covered, and the people perished. Some say that a few people survived in the caves of the highest mountains. The cataclysmic global rising of the sea levels ended civilization so extremely that we do not even know what they really called themselves. Lapita, Jomon, Olmec, Chavin are all just names given by the academic community to identify them. Plato, who may have lived through this catastrophe, wrote in the Critias, but the earth has fallen away all around and sunk out of sight. The consequence is that in comparison to what then was, there are remaining only the bones of the wasted body, as they may be called, as in the case of small islands, all the richer and softer parts of the soil having fallen away and the mere skeleton of the land being left. The lands of Tarshish and Ophir, with their maritime traders, probably suffered the same fate as the other coastal civilizations, their main urban centers lying deep under the salty waves. With areas of higher elevation becoming the islands we know today, it may have been hundreds of years before the seas were once again mapped and new ports established, during which time many lands became the stuff of myths and legends. 
Explorer Marco Polo, however, believed Ophir would be found east of India, near the island of Japan. And in 1526, Italian explorer Sebastian Cabot's mission included to search for a route to Tarsis and Ophir, Oriental Cathay, China, and Japan, revealing that the early explorers considered Ophir a real land. Was there a catastrophic sudden rise in sea levels around 400 BC that ended civilizations around the world? What do you think? If you want to learn more about what our predecessors have to say about the catastrophic changes on our planet, read the free ebook World Myth or History.